Hello there, uh, it's a holiday, but we are here. Welcome to The Pulse. We are coming to you live from our studios here in Kukumlimli on your digital terrestrial TV because we are actually free to air on DSTV channel 421, Go TV channel 144. Thanks for choosing us this afternoon. We are Joy News, independent, fearless and credible journalism. Coming up this afternoon on the polls, Ghana's economy on the brink 60 years after independence. This afternoon, we hear from the country's longest seven finance minister, Kwesi Bochi, on matters arising. Every rate at which we have been growing, it is well nigh certain that we would not have moved the bulk of our poor out of poverty. Evacuees touched down from Ukraine as government aims at completing its evacuation plan in the next 48 hours. But reports indicate that some are still stranded. A meeting with the school, asking the school to give us some time and some um, um, break to go back home. Mm. But the school was insisting that nothing would happen, so we should stay. And breaking the bias, uh, the theme for this year's International Women's Day celebration. This afternoon on the polls, we explore the effective ways of dealing with prejudices challenging women around the world, especially here in Ghana. My name is Blessed Sudan. The polls, as always, is brought to you by Global Communities Digni Lu, affordable, safe sanitation. Remember that we are streaming live on YouTube and also all of our social media handles at Join News on TV, Twitter at us with the hashtag The Polls. My personal handle is at Blessed Sugam. Always a pleasure serving you here on The Polls. Well, this afternoon, here's what we know. Ghana may not be able to move bulk of its citizens out of poverty in the next generation. That's the caution coming through from the longest seven finance uh, minister, Dr. Kwesi Boche, who's reflecting on the country's growth trajectory 60 years after independence. Now, the 65-year-old uh, republic is today witnessing its slowest growth rate ever. Although government attributes this to the outbreak of COVID-19, Professor Boche thinks otherwise. The former government appointee believes that Ghana's economy is in distress uh, and its policies are no longer seeming to be credible. Countries with whom we started the development race and with whom we are often compared, understandably, because we started from about the same levels of GDP per capita, talking about Korea especially, with whom, as you all know, we've been compared time and again. Some of these countries that we started the journey with are now knocking on the doors of the first world, the countries of high income status, while we desperately cling to the lower rungs of middle income, which is where we are. Indeed, at the average rate at which we have been growing, it is well nigh certain that we would not have moved the bulk of our poor out of poverty in another generation, quite possibly of more. At the rate we are growing, and I don't deny that we are. It is clear, studies say, that we would not have moved the bulk of our poor out of poverty in another generation, 30 years. Uh, and unfortunately, as it may be, that is the green picture being painted there by uh, Dr. Kwesi Bochwe. But uh, it appears that this conversation started way back from yesterday when the president 
talked about the need to increase revenue to grow the economy of Ghana. But there's a need for us to break all of these down for you. The president referred to the Asian Tigers uh, as his basis for making a case for Ghana to grow 65 years after our independence. So what's the situation like for countries that started off at the same rate with Ghana in terms of their economic uh, conditions? And what you need to know, first of all, is for us to understand this very graph that we have for you here. What you have now is a live data comparing Ghana's growth trajectory to the likes of Singapore. And very often we've been compared to some of these countries, uh, not just Singapore, also Ma Malaysia uh, is also in that picture as well. Uh, we'll be breaking all of this down to you and wrap up with what the situation is in terms of the comparison between, Ghana, between Ghana's growth and that of Malaysia. But first, let's put this into perspective. Listen to the president. Uh, address the issue about Ghana's growth, talking about the need to increase revenue internally so as to march on with the growth rate of the Asian Tigers. But truth be told, our tax to GDP ratio of 12.2% compares unfavorably with our peers the world over. Less than 10% of the Ghanaian population, i.e. 2.4 million people, carry the direct tax burden of 30.8 million people. The Asian Tigers whom we envy and emulate and want to emulate finance their rapid development from their own savings. We need to do the same and alter our fiscal profile. We must move Ghana to a situation beyond aid. That is a Ghana which is no longer dependent on the benevolence or charity of foreign taxpayers and donors for the management of our public finances. It is doable. We want to transform Ghana into a world-class economic hub which will benefit every single Ghanaian. So that's the solution be, being proffered by the president, Danado Danko Kufando, yesterday when he talked uh, about Ghana's growth 65 years after independence. This chat may look a bit strange to you, but we'll break it, break it all, all, all down to you because the president has been referring to the Asian Tigers and we know obviously which countries are there, which we can even compare to our situation, the likes of Singapore and Malaysia, which we'll be coming to shortly. This is the country that we gained independence with at the same time, 1957. Ours came earlier in March, theirs came in the latter part of that year. But we'll be breaking all of that down for you. But let's start off the story with what's happening in Singapore, for instance. Uh, we started uh, with the same rate of growth, uh, and in fact, ours went down somewhere in the 70s, 75, where we had the lowest growth ever, minus 12.43. Uh, as our GDP growth in terms of percentage, that was the worst in 1975, which we have right down here. This was one of our worst performances ever. But as the story progressed, in 2011, uh, under the Mills administration, you recall, Ghana became one of the fastest growing economies around the world. So here's the situation in 2011. Surprisingly, Ghana was able, uh, for some reasons, uh, some attributed to proper economic management, but whatever the case may be, in 2011, the figures appear to be in our favor, where eventually Ghana was able to outgrow Singapore in terms of our growth rate. I'm stressing the issue of growth rate because we'll put all of this into context for you. Now, in 2011, what we had was that we had the growth rate of 14.047. This was the same point at which Singapore was at, 6.338. That was the level of growth. So Singapore was growing much, much more lesser as compared to our growth rate in 2011. This was one of the highest for Ghana. And you can tell that from the trajectory that we have here. In fact, it's one of our highest growth rates if you look at this chart that we, we, we have here. So that's not con you can't contest that fact. In 2011, this magic was happening all right here in 2011. So it's good to situate the conversation within 2011. As of that 2011, Singapore was going 6.338. But for some reasons which we are not readily able to tell, Ghana began to experience a sharp decline. The sharp decline happened in 2012, from 2011 when we were gro growing fastest, 14.4. Then we came about 15 
uh, percent down to 9.293. Then in 2013, within a spate of two years, our growth fell by more than half. So more than our growth reduced by more than 50%. So if we're growing on a, a spate of 100, then it will tell you that we're reduced by 50%. That's when we began to experience the concerns emerging about how the economy was not performing well under the John Romani Mahama administration. The situation began to drop and drop further, and we went below the likes of Singapore in 2014. Obviously, you know the story. Uh, it, that definitely led us to the IMF in 2015, because at the time, we were by far performing the worst in terms of our growth trajectory. So there was a need for some austerity measures in 2015, when our growth was the lowest at the time, 2.989. That then forced the NDC administration to move in for some austerity measures and some policy guidelines from the International Monetary Fund. At the time, Singapore was growing faster than us. We were growing at 2.121, I beg your pardon, and then uh, Singapore was growing at the time at 2.989. Okay, so that was a situation, and that's where we obviously went to the IMF. But then, after the IMF austerity measures in 2017, the story changed because we progressed faster than the likes of Singapore. Because take a look at the picture there, 8. 129. That was our growth rate as of 2017. And this was after over four years or close to four years of the IMF austerity measure. So a lot of policy guidelines were given. In fact, there was a lot of fiscal discipline, as many aspects will refer to it. So government wasn't employing any longer. There was a cut in public expenditure. And quite a lot of things were happening between 2014, 2015, uh, and 2017. So many of the experts attribute that to what we're witnessing in 2017, where we grew by some 8.129. But government obviously has a different story to that. They believe that it was the Akufuado magic that was working at the time to make us grow as fast as we were doing in 2017 as compared to what was happening in Singapore, uh, where they were growing by some 4.52%. Then COVID came in 2019, so we obviously know the story. Everybody is declining. And in fact, as we speak today, Ghana's growth rate is at its lowest since 1975, or let's say, let's put it here, somewhere around 1982 as we speak, because our figure is the worst because, look at it, 0.414 as compared to minus 6.924. So after several decades, this is where, once again, we're falling. And if you look at the trend, it appears that we, we never know what would happen. We could move further downward. If you compare us in terms of the percentages to what Singapore is doing, you can't come to that conclusion that Ghana's fall in terms of its uh, growth trajectory may not be as worse as compared to Singapore in terms of how they are declining, minus 5.391%. But we need to put this, all of this into context for you. You need to look at the nominal figures if you want to understand what's happening. Because if I say 10% of 100 Ghana cities, that would obviously mean 50 cities, right? So if Ghana's GDP, in terms of the figures itself, uh, cannot be compared to that of Singapore, then when we break down the figures, you may say, well, they are declining at a faster pace, but the figures, in terms of the amount which is involved, cannot be comparable. And this trap actually gives us a clear picture of what's happening. We started off with them somewhere in 61, where we were having a GDP together of about 1.217 billion US dollars. That's where we're all operating in the 60s. But look at the sharp difference here. Singapore is way over. They are doing somewhere around uh, th over 300 billion, as we speak, in terms of their GDP. This is where they are. What's the story of Ghana? Ghana is lagging behind with some 68.532. So the story is clear. So if you're striking a percentage difference in terms of um, how we're growing, you would obviously come to that conclusion that the effects may not be the same, but if you're tracking the rate of growth, then indeed you can come to that conclusion. So depending on where you stand and where you want to make your arguments from, you can then proceed and make those arguments. But some say, if you talk about Singapore, you're not being fair to us. So why don't you compare us to countries that we started off with at the same time? Malaysia is one of those countries. And obviously, as I was indicating, we gained our independence before Malaysia. So 
Here is their growth trajectory. Similar situation just as we indicated during the Singapore trajectory. But what you have is that the story remains the same. In 2011, we were growing much more faster than Singapore. They were doing somewhere around uh, 5.294, and we were doing 14.047. That was our rate of growth and development. Then COVID came. We're falling, but we're not falling as much as Malaysia, which we all started off with, is doing. We're doing 0 0.414, and we have Malaysia doing far worse, minus 5.647. But here's the little magic here, as we're indicating where the whole controversy is stemming from, breaking down the figures as well and looking at it in terms of GDP, real GDP, not the percentage. Because as I indicated once more, if you are doing... 50% of one Ghana city, that will not obviously be equated to 50% of 100 cities because obviously the figures in terms of its real terms will be much more bigger. So here's the GDP of both Ghana and Malaysia, which we started off from. We started off together with them, somewhere around 1.916 billion, where when the tracking was going on, you realize that they started departing, shut from us, rising faster. And this is where they are 330, over three, 337, uh, over 350 billion. They're doing way over 350 billion. And then Ghana is here, 68.532. That's where our story is. And for the president, he believes that taxation is the way to go. And there will be a need for us to break away from our dependence on aid and on for foreign uh, donor support. So we'll be uh, analyzing all of this uh, and more for you here on the polls, but there's one issue that we've been watching. We'll bring that to you right after that and get you some analysis on this. Stay with us. Uh, so we'll come back to that shortly. Uh, what we do know is that uh, government is actually hoping now that it will complete the evacuation of all stranded Ghanaians in Ukraine within the next 48 hours. Now, earlier today, two batches of students flown uh, from the Walton region in Ukraine and Russia, touched down at the Kutuka International Airport. However, there are actually reports that some Ghanaian students are still stranded in the Ukrainian city of Sumy. Uh, a fourth-year Ghanaian medical student at Sumy State University, Daniel uh, Kulogo, who just made it uh, out of the city of Sumy, indicated that the main challenge uh, for many of the affected persons is transportation. We can now take a listen to it. Before the incident started, we had had a meeting with the school, asking the school to give us some time and mm. some um, break to go back home. Mm. But the school was insisting that nothing would happen, so we should stay. But once the, the first attack happened on the first day, it was close to a military base in our city. Then neighboring schools had evacuated their students with buses. And yet our school told us we should stay calm and wait. They would evacuate us. And from then to now, I believe today being the 11th or 12th day, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, the school has been telling us to wait. And students are paying um, outrageous prices to get taxes. Yeah. Others, are buy others are buying cars themselves and buying buses themselves to just to get to this train station i am in right now mm -hmm. i could just um flip i want to flip my camera and you see um the students around here oh, we all evacuated through um private cars mm -hmm. or private taxis to be here and the situation there and most of these people were scammed some some were scammed me being a victim yeah was come for of over a thousand dollars just the day before yesterday the driver brought me halfway then took me back and you couldn't fight or you couldn't argue with him because he would pull out a gun and leave you in the middle of nowhere so oh wow we, yes yes then even on the streets of sumi uh, the next day after i was camped uh, i went i went to the bus uh the bus station to get a taxi because taxis will normally come and park there and be mentioning outrageous prices. If you are able to, if you can afford, you enter and they bring you. On my way there, uh -huh. I was nearly robbed. Luckily for me, I had no money on me. 
But oh. the, the person showed me a gun and let me go. From Port Alba, we are heading to Lviv, which okay. is on the western side. And it's quite safe because they share borders with Poland and other NATO members. So, of course, um, the Russian military wouldn't attack there because it would be, um, it would be dangerous for them. So there is quite safe. After Lviv, you will take a train. No, you will take a train or a bus to um, Uzgorod. Okay. And from Uz, from Uzgorod, you take you pay another cab which will take you to the border of Hungary. Mm. Yes. So these are the these are the, the and it it will normally take about three days to complete the journey. There are about ten Ghanaian students left. Who are still hustling their way with taxis and cabs to get uh, meanwhile what we know is that two batches uh, of students have touched down at the kutka international uh, airport peter kwisi who is uh, the leader of the new batch of students arriving in ghana appealed to government to help others who are stranded out there uh, as we are here we are about 56 um, who just um, came here and uh, we thank them for that flight that we go. However, you, can, you, you could see from the face of everyone here that we are not happy. And the reason is that we, we have a mantra that we operate with that until all is out, none is out. So until we get every single Ghanaian who is trapped in any way, in any part of Ukraine, at, until we get them out, we cannot celebrate. It's not a cause for celebration in any way. So we just want to use the opportunity to still appeal that every single diplomatic string that can be pulled should be pulled to get our, our colleagues who are still stuck in Sumi. They are going through a lot, I mean, emotional challenges, uh, financial challenges, I mean, the kind of stress every day they need to escape from a missile is so, I mean, um, deteriorating uh, in their nature. So we just want to appeal to the government again that every single string that can be pulled diplomatically they should do that to get our colleagues um, um, out of Ukraine because anything at all can happen to them at any time. And government is giving assurances that all citizens caught up in detention will be brought back home. Uh, the government is also uh, urging students to avail themselves to aid government evacuation plan. Uh, Pelgrave uh, Boachi Adam is government spokesperson on governance and security. About, you know there are still difficulties in getting those who are refusing to come home. What's the progress work on that? Progress on that? So there's not a difficulty with those that are refusing to come home. It's, it be well on the individual students to make their own decision whether they want to come home. Government is evacuating as many as are willing to come back into Ghana. And so as many that are willing to come back into Ghana, government is willing to evacuate them. We have also experienced a witness that many of the students that we have purchased tickets for at the time of boarding decline to come. And so we are experiencing wastage uh, within the number of students. So we are continually encouraging the students. It is important that you come back home. We are share, sending a, a, a word of ad, 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 admonition to the parents as well to encourage your children to come back home so that when they come back home, they can decide what their next steps of education is. We are aware that some people as well are either graduating in a month or two. We have had conversations with um, the Ghana Medical Association. We are ensuring that um, those that need to be able to do their clinicals would have an opportunity to do their clinicals those that need to on board to finish the education as well government is going to be fully responsible in ensuring that the transitioning processes is done we have also spoken to the ukrainian schools as well to ensure that they make available their transcripts so those that would want to further their studies either in hungary or other parts of europe would have the opportunity to further their studies tell yourself that i have been informed it's like to be forewarned and uh, to be for uh, yeah to be forewarned is to be forearmed you have been informed that these are possibilities. But if it does happen, don't panic, relax. You can take our number and then you can call. Initially, what you can also do when you happen to be having such experiences, just taking very deep breath. Keep it there for as long as you can. And then breathe out slowly. Breathe everything out slowly and then you'll feel relaxed. Go through that exercise about three, four times, and then find something doing, reading, watching your TV, listening to your music, and you'll feel relaxed. If this does not control it, please call, and then you'll 
take you one on one. But the assurance we are giving you that government is fully behind you, all Ghana is fully behind you, and we are also there for you. We are praying that things will normalize soon, and those who will need to go back, you can go back. Well, the Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister, Kweku Ampertum Sapon, has been giving some more updates on the evacuation plan of government, indicating that government is hoping to complete the process in the next 48 hours. Sumi, as you all probably will be aware, uh, Sumi is uh, one of the areas where it's been very difficult to evacuate the, the students or the foreigners together with uh, Kharkiv, which is the second largest city in the um, in, in, in Ukraine. Uh, Sumi also has a very prominent uh, university which has a large number of foreigners. And unfortunately, because of where it's very it's situated, which is very close to the Russian border, it's been very difficult for the students to leave. So they've all this while be in their bunkers and in their, uh, in their accommodation. The situation has gotten a bit uh, difficult. And moving them has not been that easy. But fortunately, since yesterday, information that we've received from uh, the NUCS Ukraine, which is the Ghana Students Union in Ukraine, with which we have been collaborating uh, effectively, they have confirmed to us that some of the students, about 70% of the Ghanaian students, have managed to leave Sumi. Now, the total number that the uh, NUCS Ukraine gave us for the Ghanaian students was 91. Now, they are telling us that about 70% of them have managed to, to leave Sumi to safe places. And hopefully, they will arrive in some of the neighboring countries so that they will join the evacuees for us to move them further back home to Ghana. With the remaining 30%, there are also plans that are in place for them also to move out. So we are hoping that uh, most probably by today, tomorrow, maybe the rest of the 30 will manage to find their way out from, from soon. So that is the situation on soon. Now, when we come to the main uh, whole evacuation exercise, so far we have to say that it's been quite successful. A number of the Ghanaian uh, students or Ghanaian citizens in, in, in Ukraine have managed to get to the various borders and cross into the neighboring countries of Romania, Poland, uh, and Hungary, and to some extent also to Slovakia and Moldova. And then some have also got into Czech Republic. So even though it's been very traumatic, it's been very difficult for them, um, little by little, gradually, gradually, they're making some headway. And don't forget that we have our eyes uh, on the evacuation plan for you. We'll bring you some updates uh, in our subsequent bulletins. But uh, our big story for today that we're focusing on is Ghana at 65. Uh, Ghana may not be able to move a bulk of its citizens out of poverty in the next generation. And that's the caution coming through from the longest seven finance minister, Dr. Kwesi Bochi, who's uh, been reflecting on the country's growth trajectory 60 years after independence. The 65-year-old republic is today witnessing its slowest growth rate ever. Although government attributes this to the outbreak of COVID-19, Professor Bochi thinks otherwise. Uh, he believes that our economy is at its brink. And uh, earlier we brought you some of the figures already breaking down the uh, trajectory for you. But uh, let's now expand this conversation and speak to Godwin Emisa. He's a chartered economist with the Institute of uh, Chartered uh, Economists. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining us uh, here on the poll. So what's your take really on our growth trajectory? Uh, in, the, uh, night, uh, in 2011, actually, we were peaking in terms of uh, how fast we're growing as a nation. But the story is different now. Uh, what, what's your greatest fear looking at our trend of development? Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I would want to send regards to your listeners. I think um, um, some few years on the line, we have not quite stable in terms of growth. And, and permit me to uh, differentiate between growth and development. Mm. Normally, we may want to use a GDP, uh, real GDP growth rate to, 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 to explain what growth is. And then when we're looking at development, 
are also looking at how long and sustainable we could be and make reflection on the people or the income of people or how you can move the economy from um, let's say middle income to an upper income country. Um, development entails a lot uh, in terms of uh, judiciary, media, government, economic government, etc. But um, when we are talking about growth, then we are looking at the GDP growth rate. And I think if we're looking at the good rate, then I think uh, that we have not been quite successful in sustaining it in terms of its ascendancy. Um, we have not been quite. And uh, unfortunately for COVID, uh, also on a declining trend, we're hoping that after uh, COVID and after putting in place some recovery programs, we would have you know, picked up. But uh, it appears our physical regime currently has some challenges that we may have to deal with. And that is having a serious tool in terms of our group and then the prospect of, of this group we're talking about. Uh, but, but you're striking the difference. But if you look at the comparison and the way to go, government believes that taxes is indeed the way to go. Is that your position on this matter? Could you please repeat the question? Uh, the question about w what strategy is best for us to adopt in terms of moving forward. Government, think, government says taxation is the way to go, generating income in internally. That will help us. I think currently our major issue, as I indicated earlier, has to do, do with our fiscal sector. In terms of the fiscal regime, how we are managing our revenue, coupled with how we are managing the expenditure and its reflection in terms of growth. Um, we, we were seeing the, the trend a bit earlier in terms of how our expenditure was, you know, accelerating at faster rates against our revenue. And we all know we haven't been doing quite well in terms of revenue mobilization and uh, in terms of coming up with innovative ideas of uh, mobilizing revenue. And that has been the challenge of the current economic regime in terms of mobilizing uh, revenue. The political aspect of it, um, the signal that was sent to Janice earlier that um, the economy will be managed in terms of productivity or production, but not on taxation. And then the expectation of the ordinary and you know, Ghanaians in terms of how uh, the economy will be managed, particularly with the signal of uh, Ghana beyond aid, um, the picture that was created in the minds of Ghanaians. So it's the expectation of the, the people, the economic expectation of the people, as against the reality on the ground. Um, with government thinking that uh, taxation is the way to go, if you are in government position, very, very difficult as of now uh, in terms of how do you mobilize revenue. Bear in mind, this year we haven't been able to go to the you know, Euro market or go for Euro bond. And that is having a serious challenge in terms of our uh, you know, fiscal and how we can we'll be able to you know, uh, perform or embark or execute the projects and projects that we have envisaged to in the budget. And, and looking at that, you would, you would want to side with government a little bit in terms of, you know, how to expand the tax net and uh, how to mobilize revenue. But at the same time, if you are on the, the side of the household and businesses, uh, which is also trying to recover from the shock of COVID and coupled with a couple of taxes that have been introduced, I think, last year in terms of our perpetual sector, and it's its impact on the finances of, of businesses and, and like and it will be quite difficult for you to accept that strategy in terms of coming up with more taxes, uh, particularly uh, the yield level that that up, you know, that we're mm. talking about. Right. So depending on the, the perspective you are looking at it from, but I would want to side with businesses and then um, households. Uh, and, and my girls will likely be on uh, uh, the objective, the economic objective of the country, at least looking at uh, the welfare and, and the happiness of, of, of the online Ghanaian. All right, then. 
Uh, I'm grateful Godwin Ibiza is a chartered economist. Thank you for joining us. But let's stay on the issues relating to uh, taxation because uh, the Deputy Trade and Industry Minister Nana Amadokua Esiama is actually uh, asking Ghanaians to keep faith with the E levy. That is, uh, that's her belief on this matter, and as she's assuring that the administration will ensure the judicial use of proceeds from the controversial fund. The Equipim North MP argues that in spite of uh, the uh, scarce resources, government is making a lot of interventions to cushion the citizenry, citing the implementation of the Free Senior High School program, amongst others. In an interview with Join News, she appealed to Ghanaians to support the approval of the e-levy as it will spur on the country to achieve economic independence. What Ghanaians want to see is the productivity and what the money will be used for. And I believe this time um, Ghanaians should continue to have faith in us. They know it is we who are in government who solve solutions, who solve problems and give solutions. So I believe that um, if we are able to communicate to Ghanaians and they are able to start seeing their taxes at work, um, they won't have a problem with paying under 2% of whatever they have sp um, sent in a day. But, but, the, but the question has again been, because you just said that, um, the problem has been with how the money will be used. Ghanaians do not have, or the people, particularly the minority, who are against this A levy do not have the confidence in the government that you will use the money judiciously. What's the position of government on this? Uh, well, I find it laughable to say that the, for the minority will not doesn't have the confidence for the government to to use the money judiciously. And I think this this government has been commended a lot for judicious spending, looking at the kind of commitments the government has. So if uh, we take the sensationalism out of the argument and we decide to do some critical analysis to look at the facts on the table, what the government has been able to do and what the government plans to do, I believe that um, the, there's no question. The question doesn't come up that um, Ghanaians are not confident in the government. And commenting on the absence of the Domiko Binyana MP, Sarah Joa Safo, the Deputy Trades uh, Minister actually asked the minority to extend their support to other MPs who may not, who may in, in the future not attend to parliamentary duties due to personal circumstances. I have not actually spoken to her because my hands are already full. You see, I have a baby Scott here and... Uh, <laughs> um, I have work, at, so I being back and then trying to get used to the system now, I haven't really been in touch with a lot of people. But um, uh, the NDC seems seems to be un, to be understanding and accommodating, and I'm hoping that that position uh, will be they will be consistent with it for everybody else. To, to, and I'm, I'm only hoping that that position will not be limited to Ajoy alone and it will be to everybody else who may be in any capacity or situation who cannot be, be able to show up for certain duties that they are supposed to be. So, so you want them to apply the, the whatever it is fairly to all women? I, 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 I want them to apply um, that, that rule, that That's position that position to everybody you know there are times when ministers are supposed to answer questions in parliament and um, they are absent for certain reasons and sometimes the minority are up in arms so if um, they understand that people may be going through certain situations then they should probably apply the rule to everybody else that's all i mean and a group uh, calling itself assembly of Citizens United internally uh, generated revenue is actually retreating the need for Ghanaians to accept the e-levy. The group says the revenue generated will help uh, resurrect uh, the economy that has been left in shambles as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The group also mentioned the e-levy will actually capture a high number of taxpayers and reduce tax evaders. Clifford 
Vamta is one of the conveners of the group. Based on the fact that we are all just coming out of a pandemic, if you look at the OECD countries, they are all introducing three new taxes. Every single country in this world is coming up with new ways of coming to work for the pandemic or against the pandemic. I mean, to come out of the pandemic. So this is a very, very simple issue. Now, we have analyzed, we've seen that in terms of tax to GDP ratio, Ghana is way below its West African peers. Now, it's about an average of 6.6%, and Ghana, we are doing about 12% 2019 or 13% 2020. Now, it is not good enough. Also, we also know that a, f a very few of us, about 8 million of us, pay direct taxes, and about 1.26 of us pay indirect taxes, and it is not good enough. What we need to do is to expand the, uh, the tax net. When you widen it, you are able to capture a lot of people, and then the infrastructure and the social amenities that we need will follow. It is simple that we are basically not collecting enough. There are those who are evading tax, those who simply don't pay because they are not captured. The informal nature of our economy shows that we need to introduce taxes or levies like the e-levy that is wide enough that can capture everybody. So basically, basically we are all saying that we are in favor of the e-levy because it is easy to collect it is wide enough, it is very simple, and that collecting it and managing it is very efficient and cost-effective. There is absolutely no reason why we have to go to IMF to go and borrow and pay principal plus interest when we can easily collect from every single one of us. Uh, and some demonstrators shared reasons for supporting the e-levy. E-levy is something that is worth it. We need an organic way of raising revenue for our mother Ghana. If you look at the world economy, we know the impact of COVID-19, how it has affected the world economy. And right now, if, as we are speaking, there is this conflict, the Russia evading the Ukraine. All this thing is something that will have impact, economic impact on our economy, right? <laughs> And then uh, we need taxes to, to be able to build the Ghana that we want as citizens. And then since independent, it's taxes that we've been collecting to develop this country. So it's surprising for us to know just because uh, our, the NDC people are not in government because they are in opposition, they are fighting the development of Ghana. To go with our tax, we, how do we develop as a nation? Free SHS, roads, uh, national health insurance, all these things have been done because of the taxes that we pay. Five people have been shot, including the Dakwiman now, Fuseni Bawa, a chief in Tamale. Uh, the victims are currently receiving treatment at the Tamale Teaching Hospital. There has been seeming tension in Tamale Metropolis over the past one month uh, over who is the chief of Tamale. While the uh, Gupena says he is the chief of Tamale, the Dakwena also holds himself as the chief of Tamale. Recently, the Yana uh, passed a verdict on who the chief of Tamale is and asked the Dakwena not, not to hold himself as the chief of Tamale. Tamale Regional uh, Crime Officer Superintendent Bernard Baba Ananga said the five are currently in stable condition. He said the police are treating the incident as a crime. Good morning. Uh, today, that is on the 7th of March uh, 2022, at about 0555 hours, uh, the command's attention was drawn to a shooting incident at the Kema Palace this morning and that a group of people on a Toyota pickup, white in color, raided the palace, fired indiscriminately, 
and then the chief was hurt. Uh, as we speak, uh, five people sustained gunshot wounds. The chief was hurt himself, and they are currently at the hospital. That is a Tamil teacher hospital, and they're going treatments. Police visited them and then found the chief stable, but responded to uh, treatment. And uh, we have also made some deployment of policemen at the chief palace, as well as uh, some protection for those that uh, are injured. That's currently what we have uh, for you. I spoke to the chief and uh, he indicated that he was shot at. I also saw injury to his stomach and the head. Uh, however, he's doing well at the hospital to you. How many people are you on a man hand for? Well, for the information that we have, we have about 15 of them and on a white uh, Toyota uh, Hilux uh, pickup. So we have 15. And we believe there were others too as well. Maybe the numbers may be higher than that. So we will uh, uh, make sure that we pursue them and get them arrested. You said um, as you are about to uh, arrest, how soon is this taking place? As soon as. Uh, you know, criminals are saying that as soon as we commit the offenses, we need to gather intelligence. We need, as we are taking the pieces, we also. He too will not go and sit down and come and say that come and arrest me. By all means, he will go into hiding and we will also pick some intelligence about some locations which we, we didn't fit. Uh, we will uh, keep it to ourselves. The MedSec as well as RESSEC visited the various chief palaces and then spoke to them and they gave the assurance that they will use the proper channel to uh, address their issues which they themselves have. So this one which came as you are saying is being investigated and we are not saying that yes it came from A to B or whatever. Uh, we are perceiving this as a crime. We are not attributing it to anybody yet as investigations are so ongoing. These are the initial stages uh, that will come out appropriately. Uh, well, let's follow up on the story for you. Martina Bugri uh, is our northern regional correspondent, joins us for more on this. Uh, so, Martina, what's the mood like right now in Tamale? Ma Martina, if you can hear me, I'm asking about the mood as we speak in Tamale. As we speak now, the mood is calm and life has gone back to normalcy. People are going about their duties, um, be it the market and be the workplace. So, people are working. Everything is back to normal, except um, for the area the incident happened that we have some patrols going on. Apart from that, you wouldn't even know that something happened in the city this morning. Uh, aside uh, the briefing that we've heard from the Ghana Police Service, uh, is there any government delegation in the area uh, to dialogue with the feuding faction? Um, what we have been told is that um, they will be convening a meeting um, to discuss um, what to do next. Mm. Uh, apart from that, nothing has happened yet. Martina, uh, I'm grateful for the latest. Let's now bring in a security uh, analyst, Adib Sani, who understands what's happening in the area there. Uh, Adib, so here's the latest reports we are receiving again, yet again from the northern part of the country. Uh, do you feel that that enclave is increasingly becoming unsafe for residents? Um. Not really. Uh, th these are just um, uh, scattered cases that could have been dealt with. Unfortunately, um, our security services, uh, the various decentralized security councils are not doing much to curtail. Um, I've been following the issue for some time now, and I saw it coming. Um, unfortunately, I thought the regional security council should have met on this and should have put in place the appropriate, you know, um, uh, uh, mechanisms to prevent it from becoming belligerent. Um, there's been a number of videos making runs on social media. Uh, some of them very threatening and some of them appearing criminal. Unfortunately, we did nothing about it and here we are today. This issue has been lingering for some time now. Um, not too long ago, 
the Yana wrote a letter which went public to pointing to the fact that the, the Kema is not the Tamali chief and that he's very much in line with you know the priests, the the, the Bolana and the rest. But when you get to the palace of the Dakimena, it's written paramount chief of Tamali. And according to the Yana, he's not a paramount chief. So after this information came out, we had supporters of the Dakima uh, putting out videos on social media, threatening even the Yana. And we've also had chiefs from the same area asking the Dakima to take down the uh, signposts, but he didn't. Then later, he was also directed to take down the drums. They call it the tumpani, which is supposed to be the preserve for only the chiefs, because according to them, he's not a chief. But nothing happened. And I also understand information was given to the regional minister um, to the effect that he had to impress on the Dekpemana to take down those drums. But all of these is a cocktail of incendiaries, if not taken care of, explodes in our face. And unfortunately, here we are today. One of the security agencies in de-escalating uh, tension in that part of the country. I, I didn't hear the first part of it. I'm asking about the strategy, the best strategy to adopt at this time to de-escalate tension uh, between these, these, these parties involved in the, in the case. Well, first of all, we have to see it coming. And the only way we can see it coming is through actionable intelligence on the ground. Uh, this didn't require, you know, laborious or very technical intelligence because everybody knew about it. Everybody saw the videos. Everybody knew about the seeming tension in the area. So if really our intelligence agencies were up to the task, we should have seen this coming and put in place the appropriate mechanisms. And one of the mechanisms is, is dialogue. Um, we can bring the chiefs together. Uh, they are all under the umbrella of the Yana, who is the paramount chief for uh, Dagbon. Unfortunately, we, we don't do some of these things. We just let it slide, and it comes back later uh, to bite us. Secondly, we have to deal with the issue of impunity. These things do happen. Nobody is held to account, and other people feel that, well, I can also do it and get away with it. So if we are able to arrest wrongdoers, um, I'm sure it should send a clear message to others to, to refrain from even going into that uh, into that in the first place. And I think the issue of the Dagbema be the chief, not the chief, the paramount chief of Tamale, should, should really, I mean, uh, be dealt with comprehensively, even at the very top political level. If not, um, you know, if it gets to a certain crescendo, it might even be more violent than, uh, than it is. So I think that what has happened is um, very much related to the recent uh, exchanges. Uh, and uh, the police would have to look towards that direction. Um, and so uh, perhaps through that, we, we can uh, get the perpetrators. And the, the law must definitely take its course. Grateful that you've been able to uh, find time for us. Um, let's uh, get you some update that we're receiving from the Tamale teaching hospital on the number of persons uh, who have been injured. Ms. Bao Mohammed is the public relations officer. Uh, as we speak, we have three of those victims at the Tamale teaching hospital accident and emergency department. Uh, two females, one male. And uh, they are all in a stable condition. They, one came in in a very uh, critical condition but after some uh, attention has been given to this uh, patient, she is responding quickly to treatment and she's also in stable condition as we speak. She went into a uh, state of unconsciousness and for the, was brought in in the state of unconsciousness but has been revived and uh, she's uh, currently in stable condition. And breaking the bias. That's the team for this year's uh, International Women's Day. When we return, we'll talk about how best we can deal with the prejudices uh, many women are facing around the world, including Ghana. Stay with us here on The Pulse, here on the Joy News Channel.
And you welcome back to The Pulse. Breaking the bias is the theme for this year's International Day, uh, Women's Day celebration. Now, women across the world have been encouraged to actually strike a pose with arms across their bodies as a sign of calling out gender bias, discrimination and stereotyping. Uh, how are we preparing to break the bias in Ghana? Uh, Yawa Hansen, uh, who is the executive director of uh, one of the leading uh, societies uh, has joined us on the telephone lines and also Sheila Sechi actually as a spokesperson for the first uh, lady uh, she also has some comments uh, to make on this day let me start off with you Sheila uh, what um, are the biases uh, women in Ghana face uh, particularly looking at where your outfit is and what reports you've been receiving all right thank you very much Hi, Claire can you hear me yes I can all right so yes um thank you very much um for, for the opportunity um some of the biases that women have faced that has has come to the attention of the first lady and indeed um her foundation the rebecca foundation are typically based on health um economic empowerment and then access to education for young girls these are the the typical biases that has come to our attention at the rebecca foundation at the office of the first lady so how are women expected to break the bias uh, and sustain the euphoria? Well, what we are doing this year at the office of the First Lady, um, which Her Excellency Mrs. Rebecca Kukwado has been doing since 2017 when she became First Lady, is to always have a national event um, for women that is um, on International Women's Day that is focused on ending or or bridging gender parity, you know, ending bias and bridging gender parity. And this year, the theme is break the bias. So what we are doing this year is that we are here at the KNUSD Great Hall. The Great Hall is right behind me now. And um, tomorrow, um, Her Excellency, the First Lady, will be meeting with about 600 or so young people here in the Great Hall um, at KNUSD. And she will have um, a panel, there will be a panel discussion of um, some young women and um, they will be talking about various biases and how they think they can be broken and they will go further on to call out call on people who have the power to break these biases to work towards breaking them so if you ask me how we are going to break the bias and sustain the euphoria is by getting young people involved by getting the next generation or the new generation involved mm. in championing the cause of um of gender parity and breaking the bias against women and girls. Uh, that, that could be a laudable move, but many have also criticized um, all of these fora as talk shop. How about action? Fantastic. Um, I'm a big fan of taking action and not having talk shops. So essentially what we've realized over the years is that because there's not much gender parity, because there's not much space for women to move around and get things done, we realize that invariably, more and more, we see the same faces talking about gender issues year in and year out. So this year, Her Excellency the First Lady has looked far and wide, and she has quite um, new faces coming up on the panel. We have people like um, Mamiya Echa Mensabonsu from the faculty, a lecturer at the Faculty mm. of Law in Legon. We have Amtu um, Amiyawe Kumpi, a student leader. Um, we have um, Daina Adehine, who's also a young lecturer and, 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 and an aspiring leader. Um, we have Honorable Abno Sayasari, Deputy Minister of Finance. Um, and then we have Lambda. We have Lambda Adam, Lambda to Adam, who is um, a community leader. And she actually has an NGO called Song Taba up north that right. does the work a lot of work to, to, to empower women and girls. Mm. Now, having said that, um, yes, you, you're talking about the talk shop, but this year what we intend to do and what the panelists will be doing is to call, is to call out various biases that they, they've observed, either directly, they've, they've directly experienced it or something that they've seen happening around and what they think. They're going to have to proffer solutions to it and then call mm. out the people they think have the power to do something about it. Right. And I think invariably we come back to knowing that the people who we think have the power usually will be ourselves, you know, women, those mm. of us looking for the change. We are the ones who are supposed to lead that change. Uh, Sheila, great panel there, and we'll be on the lookout for the fallout from that event. But uh, thank you for now.
Former mayor of Komasi Kojobunsu has uh, asked uh, for the blessings of the Asantehini Autumn 42 in his quest to emerge uh, the first Ashanti flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress. He told Autumn 4 of his desire to increase the fortunes of the opposition party to bring the presidency home to Komasi after the 2024 election. Kojobunsu was at Mensha Palace for the Akwasidai Festival and also to officially announce his intention to run the NDC flag bearership slot this year. Love FM Serastra Sasari Donko was at the event and now reports. Dementia Palace marked Akwasi Day on Sunday with a deba of chiefs. A number of institutions and individuals paid homage to the king, Otunfo Osetutu II. Supported by a number of market queens and party supporters, former mayor of Kumase Kojobunsu came before the Asante Hene to announce his intention to run for the flag bearer slot of the NDC when nominations are opened. <laughs> I'm here today to tell Otunfo that when the time is due, I will also go and contest for the flag bearership slot of the NDC. He said no Ashanti has assumed the highest leadership of the NDC before and prayed for Otunfo's support. NDC party no. I'm praying for his support when he is pouring libation. I'm pleading that he should pray for me so I can go out there and contest and win and bring the presidency to Ashanti region. In fact, no Ashanti has ever held the flag bearership position of the NDC. I want to be the first to do that. The announcement by Kojo Bonsu drew cheers from the gathering. Two of the market women later explained to Love News why they support his move. <laughs> Kojo Bonsu began building the Kumasi Kejutia market. So this is the time to support him. And no Akan has won the presidency from the NDC. That's why Bano so so bad by pre president Akonya Dia. I will say Boni Chidom. The Ashanti region has been neglected by the party we supported. So if Kojo Bonsu wants to run for the flag bearer for the NDC to bring some development in the region, we will support him. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaredonko, Kumase. And the paramount chief of the Techiman Traditional Council, uh, Osadeo Kumfiamel the fourth, uh, has uh, built a five-bedroom uh, teacher's bungalow to help ease uh, the accommodation pressure on the Techiman Senior High School. The move, according to the headmaster of the school, Gabriel Ofosu Menta, will help improve the accommodation challenges which adversely are affecting the school's academic activities. And as Savit has more in the following report. The Techiman Senior High School, established in the year 1963, is the oldest senior high school in the Bono East region. However, the school with its growing population is being faced with several challenges. Key amongst them is the unavailability of enough structures to accommodate both the teaching and non-teaching staff of the school. Gabriel Fosu Mensah is the headmaster of the school. He shares with me how the situation is affecting academic performance of the school. The staff strength is about uh, 150 and I can say that about uh, three quarters or 75 percent of them live outside are, or are resident in town. It is not the best in controlling discipline and supervision of their preps and other important activities in the school so that if many of them are housed in the school. I think it will augur well for school management. To help address this and improve the situation, the Paramount Chief of the Tichman Traditional Council and Bono East Regional Representative at the Council of States, 
Osiadia Yo Ekunfi Ami of the Fourth, out of benevolence, started this project to serve as a teacher's bungalow for the school. In Kaduma, and Nam Santi, yes, she am more Hano. Yet the bear said, Teach my senior high, Nananum Yaka, as I said, the Maya school, no, Nananum and Cassa and Shedda, and may ye be beyond Cassa and Wahano. Apart from traditional authorities, since the establishment of this school, has not really embarked on any major project apart from Hensa Hene, who constructed a clinic for the school. In 2019, so in 2019, together with Bamuhine, we approached the school authorities for a plot of land to develop, and this is where it has led us to. Today, this dream is realized as the traditional ruler commissions and hands over this edifice to the school for use. Osia Adeyo Ekunfiyami of the fourth charge philanthropists, old students and government agencies to replicate same in order to help resolve the school's tall list of challenges. I am hopeful that with time, we will be able to do more for the school. I am therefore using this opportunity to call on all to lend their support to the school. Headmaster of the school Gabriel of Usumensa described the project as unprecedented and urged others to emulate same. I will say that Nana has done very well. He has lived up to what he pledged. And then uh, it's a very beautiful facility. And I think it is unprecedented. And others who have observed and now notice the good work of Nana should emulate. This shining example. Reporting for Joy News, Anas Sabit, Tichiman. And political scientist and lecturer at the KNUST, Dr. Kwesi Amachi, says the lack of vision in the country's quest for development has left citizens clueless in what they ought to do to contribute their quota to the national a development agenda speaking on the AM show. Dr. Amachi said political accountability remains a major challenge for the nation. If there were to have been any vision or a visionary in the Fourth Republic of Ghana, this would have been clear to Ghanaians. People would easily be pointing to that vision and, and would have been able to find out their role or roles in that vision. So, so, in, effect, been none. so, so in effect, just to clarify, so in effect, uh, our leaders in the Fourth Republic have not been visionary or not been visionary enough. Ben, to me, see, the bane of our system now is... Uh, the, 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 the challenge of political accountability. If politicians can come into office, get out and get away with everything they do, I mean, their inability to account for the huge amount of money they bring in, 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 in you know, through loans, then we are in trouble. And, and, and this is, to me, the challenge. You know, people who dissipate public funds, should, which come out every year, and then the system, you see, some people think that we should go in for uh, a, a, a constitutional review or even a replacement, a complete replacement of the constitution. It is not the constitution. The constitution at least enables us to know, to pinpoint who is responsible for the lack of accountability and, and also to simply stop what appears to me to have become a norm, the rush to go to parliament. Now, that is the most sought after place. The only place that appears to be, you know, uh, attractive in, in, in the economy today. There isn't any at least. And quickly, let me also address, you know, some of the key issues that you know, some of our colleagues have uh, mentioned. You know, you, you talk about the Atta Kennedy thing. I agree with him and that is the crux of the matter. We are not just interested in going out to vote for people to, 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 to come in a position to deliver. If they go out there and then they are not able to deliver, what our system has demonstrated by voting them out of office has not been able to bring about any change.
The president of the Apostolic Church of Ghana, Apostle Dr. Aaron uh, Amana, says Kudita is not the solution to any country's problems. Speaking at the launch of the Apostolic Youth Ministry here in Accra, he asked the youth in particular to avail themselves for not to avail themselves for such acts. Talking about um, coup d'etats or military takeovers in nations, I think we've seen a lot of that in Africa, and we all know that it is never the solution to any nation's problems. Nations must get, might get into problems. There are better ways of solving them. If you have a democratic system that you have nurtured up to a point, you don't want to bring in anything that would derail all the gains you've had, okay? And I don't believe that the youth of today will easily be deceived to, to, to try and fulfill someone's personal interest. People who come up with such things have personal interest. They, they want power. And they will come singing as if they are coming for the masses or the people. But at the end of the day, we all know what happens. I don't think that coup d'etats are a solution to any nation's problems. So what I'll say to the youth is that let us all play our role for this nation. Let everyone play his role. And I believe that God has blessed us. We have not been able to take care of our resources well. But I believe that the future belongs to the youth. So if the youth will do the right things, if the youth will enter the empty spaces and the opportunities being created now, this nation will have a future. Chairman of uh, Parliament's Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, Kwame uh, Nyemadu NT, says the law that punishes attempted suicide may soon be removed from Ghana statute books uh, as it is more of a mental health issue. Speaking at the National Conference on Decriminalization of Petty Offences organized by the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, he said that his committee will be doing an assessment of some of the minor offences and will subsequently recommend their removal. Petty offences uh, such as loitering, hawking, begging for alms, amongst others, are considered misdemeanours and are punishable by a fine or up to three years of prison term. I quite remember there was a time that two ladies went to fetch water from the village, uh, Riverside, and they fought on their way. And the police charged them outstanding to disturb the peace of the public. The question was how many people were at the site and were being disturbed. So I cannot agree with the chairman more when he says that it leads to the corruption of the security forces and also leads to the congestion of our prisons. Because if you do not get somebody, a lawyer, who will defend some of these cases, then they will be thrown in prison without any defense. My colleague had already mentioned that there is a wake-up call for the private member's bill in Parliament. As the chairman of the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, I deem it a responsibility that we need to actually peruse through these laws, our criminal code, and see the way forward. Probably recommend that some of them must be given some lesser punishment or probably be eradicated from our books. I, at the moment, the committee is discussing an offence which we see as a serious offence and that is attempted suicide, for instance. The committee has been educated to actually agree that it should rather be seen as a mental illness instead of a crime. And 
very soon the committee will be settling on this matter and probably get it out of our statute book. Acting Director of uh, Human Rights at the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Mary Nati, says uh, to criminalize petty offenses is to criminalize poverty. Saying that there shouldn't be law enforcement. We are not saying because law ensures what? Social, societal cohesion. So it's very, very important we acknowledge that law. Again, human rights is not absolute. There are duties under human rights. There are responsibilities as citizens. You don't just enjoy your right. Your right ends when another ends. But where the violation of your right ends are to a point where you are unable to enjoy your full potential in life, then there's a problem. And that is why we are calling for a balance. Look at a state that has incarcerated most of its youth in prison. When I was growing up, we had infrastructure uh, as in companies in Tema. I grew up from Tension. And the companies were working 24-7. You see buses dropping people, bringing them back, picking others. And those uh, men and women, they have certain social protection at their workplaces. Their children go to school on scholarships. They have free medical care. And they have income to care for their children. What we find now, we don't have that kind of social protection for our people. And so most of the people fall prey to these offenses. We are saying that there can be alternatives. And I'm calling for an administrative approach. Criminal justice system starts from the point of arrest. When you are arrested, you have been informed. Sometimes I'm called, my people in touch will call me, Madam, come. Even explaining the crime that the individual has committed to the person is a challenge. They don't seem to even understand. Besides, it is not even anything that they can never be granted bail. But they are refused bail unless a lawyer steps in. So the justice system in itself is draconious. Let me use the word. And so we are saying that. Let's do away with the justice system. Let's look at an administrative approach in tackling some of these uh, uh, petty offenses. And maybe. And some uh, members of the governing New Patriotic Party in the Biakoya constituency of the OT region have expressed their anger over what they describe as uh, a ploy to impose executives on them. These members from 25 polling stations numbering about 2,700 were denied the right to elect their executives on Saturday as the constituency uh, election committee members failed to conduct elections in their areas. They have therefore called on the party's national and regional executives to ensure polling station elections are held in their areas as prescribed by the party's constitution. Members of the new patriotic party from 25 polling stations in the Tepa Abutuasi and Tepa Amanya areas gathered at their respective election centers eager to elect their executives on Saturday. However, the Biakuya election committee failed to show up to organize polls to give opportunity to the members to select their desired candidates. The agitated members said they smell foul play since the committee earlier denied some aspirants in the same polling stations access to nomination forms. They explained that the aspirants had to pick nomination forms at the national headquarters in Accra, submitted and were cleared to contact without being vetted by the committee. Emra, it was just a very election, how much did I say you got your forms? Forms and that executives didn't form soon by now. I'm talking about my course, I'm my forms and I'm talking. We could not buy the nomination forms when the executives came here because there was confusion. We managed to get the forms at the national headquarters and submitted them. They accepted the forms and scheduled today for the elections. We have been here since 8 o'clock, but the committee members have failed to show up. The top hierarchy of the party must act now. Some three executives have hijacked the party. That means the be me a baby. The fear be 
NPP party, the Fiebe America, we want to ask if the NPP party belongs to an individual and his family. If we are not allowed to elect our police station executives in Tapa Alavanyo, we will leave the party and join a different one. We haven't seen any significant improvement in the party during the eight years administration of the constituency executives. They are selfish. That is why we are eager to elect new executives to help the NPP break the eight. Addressing the press, Prosper Asari believes the Biakuya election committee is scheming to deny them their rights to elect their executives following a no-show on Saturday. A calculated attempt to deny us the right to elect our leaders, yeah. hereby imposing favorites on us to serve the selfish interests of a few yeah. at the detriment of the party. Yes. We are worried this de development will cause disaffection in the party which is gaining grounds in the NDC stronghold yeah. and affect MPP's election fortunes. Yes. The aggrieved members numbering over 2,700 are therefore calling on President Akufuado, <coughs> the MPP General Secretary John Boadu, Chairman, the MPP Chairman Freddie Blay, to call the committee to order and ensure elections are held in these affected polling stations. If this election is not done, we will assume that these affected polling stations do not have delegates to represent them in the constituency elections or any party activity. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Tapa Abutuasi. And we can now take you elsewhere, residents of uh, Agubie, a predominantly farming community in the Wenchi municipality of the Bono region, who were deprived of clean drinking water for several decades, can now drink from a portable water source after Voltigana Limited constructed a mechanized borehole for the community. The water system will also help solve uh, the water challenges bedeviling the smooth running of the Agubie chips compound, which uh, has been without water since its establishment. My colleague Anas Sabit has the rest of the story. This is Agubie, a farming community here in the Wenchi municipality of the Bono region. The community has over the years been without good roads, quality health care and access to a portable water source. Fortunately for the people here, the municipal assembly constructed this chips compound few years ago without water. Since its establishment, the people here would have to find ways and means of supplying water to ensure that the facility remains operational. Assemblyman for the area Emmanuel Kwekudechi tells me how this is done. During the open day clinic, I and then unit committee member and the town committee members, we fetch water on our head to supply the, uh, the nurses. And because of that, it makes me worry. Even when I'm going to farm, unless I go, they, they will give me attention that our water has finished. So I have to make sure that I will provide them before uh, I go to any, anywhere I want to go. The situation, according to the people, heavily affected life in general for the people here. Someday, <laughs> Today, the people here through the benevolence of Voltic Ghana Limited can breathe a sigh of relief after benefiting from a water project that will provide water to the chips compound and the community at large. Managing Director of Voltic, Simon Everest, says the move forms part of the company's ways of giving back to the society. 
We do in Voltic. We, we are responsible, the Coca-Cola company, we are responsible for the communities that we operate within. You know, without the communities being, and it is very much part of us giving back to the community. So we do these projects. I've been involved in several projects across Africa in my uh, 11, 12 years on the continent. And in fact, in Mozambique, I did a couple of schools exactly the same sort of thing. It was almost identical to, to this. So, you know, we're very happy. This is the sort of thing we want to be doing. And every person has a right to have good, clean, portable, uh, refreshing water. Chief of the community, Nana Dechi, expressed gratitude for the support and is hopeful that it will go a long way to help solve the community's water challenge. <laughs> Reporting for Joy News, Anas Sabit Agubie in the Winchi Municipality. Well, thank you very much for staying with us. And as I promised, we're going to have a conversation with the man, Emmanuel Gameboy Tego. It's been a very, you know, interesting day of uh, physical training and conditioning with um, the experienced coach, Carl Loco. Now, all of this is geared towards April 9 in San Antonio, Texas, where one date that this boxer has been looking forward to for some time now is finally going to be made manifest before the eyes of the boxing loving fans and sporting loving fans all over the world well he's traveled a very good journey and in 33 fights he's lost only once and has 15 knockouts out of his 32 wins well so that's the story of the man Emmanuel the Game Boy Tego and was right here on this ground and I'm talking about this hallowed ground of the Bukum Boxing Arena that he won the IBO lightweight title in the inaugural year of this boxing edifice which sure carries a lot of history when it comes to the boxing story in Ghana. This man is one of the 10 boxing world champions that Ghana has recorded since you know uh, Ghana started making major achievements on the international scene when it comes to sport. My brother, how are you doing? Good oh, to see you. Me too. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, yeah. What have you been up to, um, you know, since you came back for holidays in Accra? Yeah, first of all, like, I'm at an emotion because in your training camp, you in Florida for a long time. She, you know, open it, open it, then open it, now can be like, it's more they can be now. Ryan Garcia already, I don't even feel it. You walk along, you go, you walk along, you go, and it's more they accept or fight. At least in the early days, I feel like I'm not sharing it with you. So I'm so lucky that I'm not keep on me training. I feel like it's a good opportunity to me. For now, I'm not proving myself much on my family. I'm not feeling my own. I'm best. I'm not feeling my own. I feel like this is the time. I'm not going to prove my own. I know I can feel best here. I'm not going to be PG. I'm going to leave me outside. I love you as well. Fight me and my use me can showcase me. It won't feel like it. Me prepare towards for. They can fight me in cafes, Ryan Garcia. I won't feel like it. My she, my she, mommy, Friday. Decide I can my she test day. She, now I guess I need my she Friday. Well, I feel like it. After Friday, from there, I've been there. My fiance, my partner, no need. I love my fiance, my partner, no need me feel. She, I show I get cool. My feel press conference. Come in, we are Ghana before running my she. Well. I hope I can offer another fine. Now, I want you to tell me about uh, how you feel about you know, opponents walking away from you when negotiations come up. For instance, you know, there are a few big names in the lightweight division. The name Emmanuel Tego is mentioned and they want to, you know, steer clear of you. They don't want to entertain any talk about fighting you. How do you feel about it? Yeah, sometimes I feel bad because they're very bad. I can like for your division, go name of your most money, go no ni. I will say no ni no no. The ashe bo be ashe bo be. Ni bu ma sun. No ni me pile. 
on a get like top five fair no lier in chair lumachanko in chair ryan garcia in chair david any for me she in try i'm a fan like in force in push what push was a walk i'm a fan you know you may be lady no baby any a septa keba no fight a little way a jamaica i'm a kami small fighter on nearly a kera in garcia and before in kele i know final later they pull out a shabby baby to snare no head night contest for you in ya I won't feel like a day news I can get back in Calabano because I'm a feel like a cool okay in back campaign she back Ghana but spend all the day she you know I get so lucky like you know to my own keep on it be be to make it one I won't feel like it you get right guys yeah fight me me like a banner you have me shared in crap to get your mafia money okay for now I can't I'm a team who may accept me I think I prove you much on my family because lightweight unified champion in close partner and in gym mates, they were. I know them like in the army fair division. I won't feel like a good opportunity. I mean, my showcase here much on Ghana, like a US fan. Many doubt me sometimes. I many doubt of me. Jane, I'm a little money. My face, she on a get a few more cool road from care. So I come here and we a fable for a show. I quay warmila no Jimmy Ghana because in deliver on my face. Fair Ghana, I mean, I can only my fear. Fair fair, I be a war. Media was still and I be an me tell me me prove me. Or me me prove me. I feel like this is the time. Instead, me prove more much on Ghana be like. No, me me feel me. Me like a fight. Me like pressure very quick. No, me me feel about me. Because me be eh neke neke neke. Ryan Garcia like you got like. Like just imagine money me na me tila she. Hello, me put touch me. Ah, me me actually ni kengpa. Hello, ah, me me actually ni me show sign. You know, like in Mambi, no, le beni Ghana be warrior alone. No, kuna mama atu le gan face sign. In your problem, you Ghana be put the J box side. Ewo, I know I can move me dream ma. Ewo, I make a worry about me. Boy, cause sorry, I'm here touching no kwe. No kwe, no ni mani ma face final. It's a whole semi-carnival atmosphere in here. Um, the members of the Ghana Boxing Supporters Union, uh, his friends and uh, some mates from the vicinity are all here. All of this is to give him support and also to have a feel of what it's like for a former world champion to train for a big fight such as this. We'll be coming to your relationship with the fans and your relationship with the Boxing Authority and all of that. But I want you to tell me about um, how you've positioned yourself. I mean, you, you keep talking about it, about people doubting you, people doubting your quality, people doubting your capability, and people doubting that you can deliver on April 9th, once you step into the ring. How do you feel about that as well? Yeah, sometimes they're like, you feel or bad, you feel it bad. The reason when you feel or bad, you feel it bad. When I get, Jane, I'm like, 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 she sometimes on a get care. Oh, oh, you may have a few on a concern you win over because me paint me black. Black me may paint me. I mean, I get white in the shall make a black in woman. I mean, I get white and you put only me. She in touch each other. May we a lot. May we know number we can be on a canny chance and beba like boom. Mofia more expert because me expect I get sunny. Man, no warm up. Man, me boxing in touch it two years. Nimba no. Three years in Bano, no, any any panic in any fear of any fans, many rare reality fans. I'm a little man, my fear, I'm a few so. Well, this is also a signature when you come around here and this side of town. Uh, the folk songs, the, the Jama songs, that's what we call them in local parlance. And that is how it all runs. So remember that we're here on this channel bringing you this big conversation on Joy News, on Joy Prime and on Joy Sports as well. Uh, looking ahead to that very big date of April 9 and this exclusive conversation is coming to you from the center of the Bukum Boxing Arena. Now, Game Boy, um, you have traveled a journey in Ghana. You've spoken about it at length. You now are looking forward to proving yourself to the rest of the world. Um, tell me about training. Tell me about the relationship that you have with, uh, you know, Lawrence Kaoloko, whom we see you doing a lot with, you know, in this period as you get yourself ready uh, to go to the United States. Yeah, first of all, I can't care my way. No, you may be about me, coach. Carlo, where on a care 
she sometimes say in the phone I can call me or I know you in quality and I you are negative one say because me the only box and can say box in no novice in no amateur straight to professional in my low 16 titles say I'm a in deliver where apart for that a carlo who allergy money me she napoleon jame me team papa j black panther and energy papa coach i guess it god bless you so yeah yeah okay nika ji moni ameni emi nika ni ke mi adu ofu ile ni ke no nika ke le start from day one until like nika e ji mi le gbele fe ke ba ke bu true alu anu kwale e mi an le gbele mi ke prosper an kra wo wan le gbele ji i see for me because for me what decide no me wo e box akwa chole osmano akaba yeah osmano akaba i remember him ni wo ya ke se ji mi ni ke prosper an kra ke wo ke le no wo ni le fa si ke ma wa tu le asian awo ni wo decide a ke le wo wo ba pa boxing ni ni ka ke wo ka pa ni wo ke ke wo pa be wo ke le train be wa train ye konklo le ko ke be ke wo nsmo e ke wo ba chi wo ni egbele ji wo wo fe plan e si ni egbele ji mi wo ni wo si wo papa ke se wo ni wo ke la ba train e wo ni ana o ni mi si so lo ke e le chi e le na buko ban ku ni ke le start e train e wo e ba keep ji me company o ni mi si le ba fi ati fe ji ni after time ni decide a ke ma ba na ke wo mi e ke come e wo train ni ke come e no mi one division eh, debate or thing like only me she hey well this one will be more closer she always say uh, what relationship you are you are fine what you are doing about sunday what you are okay only me she sometimes say come out of you can come here you are trying to join you are a man can often what you are free they can walk back and you won't feel like any car what relationship uh, from day one day for now ni member you think back on a back and pal on the always same promise or like it me not clever to me you can back on to me won't feel like this is a time ni in ke lo ba prove o chomo fi am sometimes i feel like coach ele ke support ba bo boxer no ba deliver no do yo ni mi coach fin in ke le tu ni coach e ba ke wa ba o mi no ni yo ye mi in an dey talk coach apart for in an dey talk bo coach e coach e san ibo no yo kon ale che ma no enjoy ni je ibo no no america ni yo in coach ba ke ma ke ba ke bo ake yi ma today i don't see your magic ske mi fe magic e vi e ga ni se ke magic e beginning ni start e i mean enjoy your magic e don't me ke ba kona ke ko fe lo ko awon eji o me oni mi si bo ko ba ni ke mi ni e fe ni ke e wa e to bi e je bi e si if you like a unified champion ke le ni sparrow inspire me ti ni ke le o jim apart for that en ke me me different different sparrow wo ke ni na ke mu e unified title le bo ni am credit fi o le to an ke ke na ko chance e ni e wa ni ke me ko me ba compare mi pele chole akoba ni o che mo ko gbe ke compare mi so lo ko ni gbo ti a ke ni emi because e na chance e ni e no oni mi si mu e na chance e ni e no le to an ke ni e na chance e ye eh ko ke de 3 years ni e rate sense she come down rate sense ba fe ni ye ba fe no ma 1 ni ba fe no ma 2 ba fe no ma 3 ba fe no ma 4 ba fe no ma 3 years ni ni no ko anya drop mi e rate sense e won bi la ke ke wa mo fi am ta mo go ni e wa ni ke la no wo ke e wa she can choose me mo e wo me no le mo na choose ona ka me no am eji me ni e wa la oni mi she because me beni loma ke eh me ne eh de me ni ke eh rain garcia ni no beni like i mean ta open it amika me be open it ake mi me me ten ya ke okay na mi ni ji option mo ko mi a choose mo ko mo ko choose mi ni you think ake ke eh loma cha go ntwe no do bi bi o lele mi do bi bi no mi mi ji no ma training ba for ni le po e yen se Oni mi si yen se wo san ni mi o choose ne ke no e wo ye bi ni a ke mi de wa choose mi e divert ke ton e konklo eh do bi bi si e mi ji no ma na e wo ke eh me ne eni eni ke e to mo ke la no do bi bi si e ke ni bi ne kwa mi mi de wa choose like sometimes eh ni bi ko me ni si ya okay because sometimes eh mlen ten so po mi show e ni bi ko me ni experience oni mi si oh in ya like boxing ni mi she ni ke no mo ko mo ko le until you hear me wo inno ko ona boxing mi to mo no boxing ni afimi bibi o alo my experience is ji to mo be na yi o mo my experience i can't you to feel or thing because so so this is to say that in your whole career you have not um you've not had any stiff position you haven't had any difficulty with any of your opponents before no 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 he experience ko na kan down because from day one eh, i don't think i can get 
me we you are you are us us and no eje me she nyo you know florida is come you know eh california is come the first fight eh us and stop open eh oscar no boxer no oscar na you are eh a birthday gift na ona ko na a birthday na poison book she she ni birthday she she fit na eh no eh expect akan ke poison ba ma fit birthday ni birthday sana na ge yo mo that very day na wa ba no birthday time eh mo e wa me show time ni okay to me ah So um, if you just joined us, we're still having this conversation here on this channel. Uh, we're on Joy News, on Joy Prime, and on Joy Sports. Uh, having this conversation with former IBO lightweight champion, Emmanuel the Game Boy Tego, who's looking forward to causing a major upset the world over because he believes in his skill and he believes that he's got what it takes to silence everyone uh, on the international scene on April 9 in San Antonio in Texas. All right. Now we've um, we've talked a bit about your relationship with the with the trainer. Let's talk about your relationship with the fans. I mean, this is a regular conditioning session, but then we do realize that uh, you know you have quite a number of people here, and it, it is like this all the time when you come here to train. Tell me about the relationships that you've grown, you know, in the vicinity amongst your fans and all of that, and how that also feeds into you know your everyday exploits in the ring. Nathaniel, you know something about me. Put him there, do you know any more about me? Me no, I'm one, I'm only I'm only Papa Sherbox, you know, I'm only I'm only Michi. I'm only I'm only for I'm only Papa and Sherbox, you know, I'm only I'm only come and say I'm negative. Upa, see see, I'm talking about me, Coco. Ni pa no ni mo ase like me koko no mi na mi ye champion na mi na mi ye okia na mi na me boom ye opponent no ye kun bi abo u be ti se o we ni o nye din we wo ese wo ese de bi aye se mi o nye din maku 33 fighters always me prove me wrong and see i don't know the reason why and see de bi a man for head out to me no and sometimes ni pa no be ti me o se we ntimi mi a wo se o we 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 give me ntimi no eti fans no mo ye reality o mo di meti no mo no mo nim de wo me mo e no mo nim de like meti mi aye and see sometimes me appreciate me fans kitu anu maybe e bi a fans no a o mo ye fake no o mo grab crap o o mo no be man e be bo me no eti me minimum say o ye me fans na o ye hold fans i know you minimum mo o mo ye fake o mo ba be join no because who need option o crop for no ya bu obi a gana no mi pe na em bo me o mo pe say em bo me keke mo fear mo to ayi mi na na ke ayi me ne keke no ja me pra cause man ayi mi bi a no ba na fans ni mana o nyo o jimi mi mi box ni e mi ke ma ke ko no mo ni anu ka jimi en pa box you make a box because in Benoni Mama care for and say, if you, you're saying that if you lose this bout, you're out, you're not fighting again. No, you make a back a car, you mean in Lenoni Market for and say, Lenoni Mama care in family, can you mean can you do me? Well, in part, for me, that's a big statement to make, yeah, because car you make because in Lenoni, you care you mean better to try and get in Benoni me to my chief don't it was an email for my mom uh, if you stores, if you apartment, if you okay, mama, oh, mo, hello, mama, I'm mo, okay, she talk any day. You man, I get fine because I don't think I get any. But but you know that in boxing is also a case of three results. It's uh, a win, a loss, or a draw. So there's a possibility that either of these could happen, and anything can also happen in the ring. And so it's a big statement to make, considering that you you still have youthfulness, you're still fit, and you can still fight. So if in your likely instance that you lose this bout um you know you can still continue why would you want to stop because jay ryan garcia sane i see what do you mean she you know ni me me expect the yeah hello no ni me to my achieve a boxing and feel like a sunny ryan garcia stop me a bell if i can stop me a bell no decision you might take no use animal for boxing because if i sell it no ni money my fee let ryan garcia let you hey choose me shame like i can't enjoy me what do you mean she me no money i know pressure but no I get my to lemma. Where me to Eba Mamina can't sleep. Well, one and a money, I know. Only no me promise Ghana is there. You will have no penny care by a no power boxing because you will have by a champion, fair champion. Too much less I knew what they left in Chevy Ponchi in and fine. She mini magic, a bear magic, magic, or bear go. Ni game me mini. Touch on the game boy. Touch on the game boy. Touch on the game boy. Say my name again. Game boy. Say what you are, 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 say what you are